Welcome to today's drawing and planning session. These are going to be the sides for our toolbox. So, over our cube toolbox, we're going to jump right into the drawing. There's a few adjustments that I need to make on here. Um, one thing that happens when we add these fillets is that kind of moves our dimensioning them. We'll do that in a few minutes. Um, all right, so let's jump into our drawing for today. What we're doing is we're starting, I want to adjust that right away, because we're starting with a piece of sheet metal that's going to be 5 and 7 eighths wide by 6 inches tall. Now be careful when you get your actual metal because it is almost square. Okay, it's 1 eighth of an inch square or less than square when we get to that size. So you got to make sure that the taller way goes up and down. We're going to jump in and we're going to draw a box then. 5 and 7 eighths by 6 inches tall. So go to start... Uh, new if you're not on that landing page and let's just draw our box with our lines okay this is kind of our standby I'm gonna turn my ortho on now five and seven eighths going across five dash seven over eight enter we're gonna go up six inches okay we're gonna go over five dash seven eighths enter and then go down and click on this if your snaps are turned on over here. And then right click enter or escape or enter on your keyboard. Okay, I'm going to go and blow it up here with my auto zoom. It's a little too big for me to see the bottom, but then I just go one click up. Okay, so start getting used to using some of these tools. We don't need to use this for rotation, but it is handy. Pan, you can use the wheel on your mouse, but to do the auto zoom here, that works. All right next thing we need to do is this panel is going to be four inches tall um, before we do our little zigzag fold here now all we have to do then is grab your offset tool and we're going to type in four and come up from the bottom and click on this bottom line and bring it to the center and click to select it okay um, the next thing that we're going to add roughly one eighth of an inch of material here for the zigzag okay well that's where we're going to mark it and we'll have to do that we'll demonstrate how to actually make that fold in class i have um, some adapters and stuff that uh, jigs that we put in the vise to help us do that so same process we're going to use the offset we're just going to go one over eight and bring this line from here up okay um that's fine we only have one more set of lines really to do on the top here, but word of caution, when we do this next set of lines, we want to go to this line, not this one, and that will help keep a sharp corner down off of our box. So let's go over here now, and we need to figure out how to draw an angle one half of an inch away from here. So you can use your offset tool and bring a line over make it half inch here that's fine or you can use your line tool and go here drag it this way and type in a half inch or 0.5 enter that locks it into that place and then I got the ortho turned on uh, I should be able to leave it on because my snaps are on. and then I zoom into this bottom and I click on that bottom of the two lines okay and enter so let me demonstrate that again on the right hand side. I'm going to go, let me go, do, 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 do. line, go from this corner to the left now, I like to drag it out past and then 0.5, enter for half inch, and then I'm going to bring it down to this bottom intersection and click, and that seals that there. Now the cleanup is pretty easy, just grab your trim tool and you can draw some lines across. Now, if you're real careful when you're doing an angle, you can use that to kind of snip that corner off as well. And same thing, I'm gonna kind of put my mouse up here, zoom in a little bit, and I can trim everything all up in one file, fail swoop. Now, the last thing that we're gonna do, I'm gonna introduce one new tool here. Um, this is a chamfer tool. We use chamfer and fillet a lot to give us kind of a nice rounded corner so we don't have sharp edges. Okay, because we're, we cut a lot of things with our snips and they're straight lines, we're gonna use the chamfer tool. 
So a fillet is where you take a corner and you round it. And if I pull this down underneath the fillet, I have a chamfer tool. So we're going to grab that chamfer tool. And it's going to say select the first slice. But hold on, we haven't given it any measurements yet. <clears throat> so if you look down on this bottom row here, let me turn on my little mouse highlighter here. Excuse that. Let's bring that over. If you look down on this bottom row, it gives us the samples of what we can do. What we want to do is we want to do the distance. So I can just click on distance here, and then it's asking me, what's the first chamfer distance? Okay, so we're going to do a quarter inch for um, a chamfer. So our first distance is going to be a quarter inch, so 0.25, enter. Now what's my second one? It's also going to be a quarter inch. Okay, that's going to be, and you'll see how that is. Now it says select your first line of chamfer. So what's the first line we're going to cut an angle on? This one. And the second one is going to be this bottom. When I hover on it, you'll see what that did is it, it brought this line up a quarter inch here and a quarter inch there, uh, and it worked just fine. I can do the same thing now that that's set. Now if I grab my chamfer tool, it remembers my measurements, and I can go one and two, okay, and enter. All right, we could have used chamfer for this and set one measurement at a half inch and one at two inches, and that would have worked as well but I like to demonstrate it on just a plain, easy, easy corner before we do anything like that. Last step then, let's get this dimensioned so that we remember which way we have to position our sheet metal when you usually use your prints. Um, I'm gonna do the overall height. So I'll grab this corner down to this corner and slide it off to the side. Give myself a little bit of room there. I'm gonna do the overall width. I like to do that on the bottom of this because our top is tapered so much. And oh, if you notice, it's not in fractions again. So let me just get out of this. We're gonna go into annotation and change that to fractions. Okay, standard modify here is change primary units. Let's go down, grab a fraction, and that's okay. And we're gonna go set to current and close. And that should change it for you. All right, now the other big ones. Um, <clears throat> we can do our dimension from this corner to the bottom and bring that out. That works good. And I think I want to do this top because if we measure down from here to here is two inches. Now it's a little bit redundant. We probably don't have to. But that's where our angle goes, okay? And then I need to go from this line to this line to show that it's an eighth of an inch. So how do I want to do that? I can do that on the inside. I can do that on the outside. I'll let you pick where you want to put that. But we don't want to forget that. Okay, now we have to go for the top. So let's grab my dimension tool. And we want to go from this corner, the bottom corner, down to this top corner, and if I pull that up, it's changing this to half inch, okay? Do I need to do this? No, because I'm really measuring a half inch over from both, okay? So maybe if that's gonna help me, like in the procedure of how we do this, I can do the half inch on both sides because that's how you're gonna lay it out on your sheet metal. And this distance across is irrelevant if I measure a half inch in to mark it and a half inch in on both sides. We have all the overall dimensions that we need, except the dimension of this fillet. Um, let's see, so our fillet, let's go like this actually. We're gonna put a liter in here and we're gonna call this a quarter inch fillet. I'm gonna turn off my ortho because I want my liter to give me a little angle here. In a liter, what that do, does is it gives us a note, okay? And that gives us an arrow pointing that. And we're gonna call that a quarter inch uh, uh, chamfer, I'm sorry, not fill it. Ch -cham P -H -E -R. Chamfer, is it S? Chamfer, okay. Um, I'll double check here, chamfer, yep, with an S. And then, so that's gonna be typical. We put it on one side, we put it on the other. And hopefully that will, uh, that's just a big enough note that we know that it's a quarter inch in. Does that have to be exactly a quarter inch? Not really. That's to give us relief for the bottom of our box where our bend goes in inside of our toolbox. There's a few more notes that we want to put on here. If you go back on them here, 
Okay, big thing is we want to fold our zigzag before we do our hem. So I want you to put that on your print because that's instructional for the order of when you're actually folding this. So we're going to grab another leader. I'm going to go here somewhere on this zigzag. It could either be on the top line or the bottom. I'm going to drag it down to where I have some space and I'm going to put fold my eighth inch zig zag before folding him. Okay, now we have that stagger. It folds, it's going to go down to the right and then to the left and then up in order to give us some space uh, for our box lid to close. This one, we want it to bend to go to the inside so our lid closes over top of it. I put that note there and I select off to select it and then I'm going to, you know what, we need to put a hem in there. Um, I probably could have done that before. This is going to be, this is going to be a, I believe it's a 3 8 hem, 3 8 hem, okay, for the height of this. So let's go back into our drawing. We're going to go offset and 3 8 or you can do 0.375, 3 over 8. And I'm going to bring this down. Now, if you notice, this does not go all the way to the end. So I have my extend tool underneath the trim. So bring your scissors tool down, pick the extend tool. If I hover on the right side of the line, it extends to here. If I hover on the left side of the line and click, it extends there. Perfect. And I guess we need to dimension that, don't we? because that wasn't there when we did our dimensioning. So sorry, I went out of order. Okay, and we'll snap to here. And um, boom, 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 boom. Let me drag this to the right, maybe. That doesn't like it there. I'm gonna go here. Um, three, and three eighths him. And I think I can do this, um, him. Okay. And that lets me know that this has to be folded over actually at 180. So um, hopefully that helps. One more annotation and use your leader. We're going to put another note here that says fold him after um, zigzag. Zigzag fold is made. Okay, perfect. While you're doing annotations, put your name on it with the text here. I'm just going to grab this in the middle and your hour if you do so kind. So I'm just going to put Mr. K. And I think that is everything we need. <clears throat> so let's go into layout mode. See how things look on our page. We want to shut the grid off. Um, one of these days I'll have to show you how to set up our defaults for that. So go click on paper so it gives this. Shut your grid off. And we can leave it that size, that's fine. I can zoom in on here, that center, make sure all your measurements are on here. If it's good, then let's go up and export as a PDF in order for you to uh, attach this to your assignment in our online classroom and submit. So, going to give it my name. Let's see, this is going to be Pube. I don't know if I can get my keyboard to work. Pube Sides. Okay. Uh, I guess Cube Box Sides. Cube Box Sides and your name and your hour would be fantastic. Hit Save. Um, and that should pop up. Attach that to your classroom. I'll tell you where that's going to go and you should be done. Thanks for doing today's build. We still have the top to do and then the little pieces that go on the, the top as well, the, the sides of our, our lid. So come back and we will get going in the, the next part when you're ready to do the layout for your top. Thanks for joining me in today's build and we'll see you in the next one.